Hello everyone, welcome back to the stream. Hopefully with your favorite Italian. Um, I am just launching Elite. I should be ready in a second. In the meantime, um, let me go. Let me take care of a few things. This should be good. Maybe. Let's see if I can disable this. There we go. The music is back. Um, I found an alternative. So there we go, Synthwave tonight, Elite is back, uh, everything looks looking good, can begin. Alrighty, um, there's a message which is the carrier, that's fine, that's fine. Um, let's check this situation with the carrier here. Um, perfect, uh, whole path is laid out, um, now let's do, well first, let's see if my next destination is above the horizon or not, it is, perfect. Um, that's nice carrier. Probably won't be able to jump it um, all the way to destination, but that's fine because I'm going the same um, the same direction. So. So there shouldn't be an issue in that regard. Perfect. Got my water with some lemon in it. Because I found myself lately drinking so much water because it's hot and dry here that I, I, I feel thirsty, but I don't want to drink any more plain water. It's just too much. Um, I, I need some other kind of taste. Oh. And also, let, let me know if the music is too loud or stuff like that, or too quiet. I can change. The arrangement is a little bit different than what I used to have. Uh, because there was like a, a dedicated slider. Well, instead this is... Um, this is just part of... Desktop music, I guess. Okay, what's this system like? Uh, potential... No, no bias. Are we sure? No bias. No bias. Okay. Never mind. Then. Next.
need to adjust the posture. There we go. I probably won't be streaming too long tonight. Uh, three hours, something like that. Yesterday night I ended up going to bed way too late. And this morning was um, a less than ideal waking up. This is interesting. Um, oh no, it's in the end. Never mind. It's gonna be... Aishis. No. Neon atmospheric landable with life. Well, it could be Aishis, it could be Taylor or Verata, which I th not sure if I've ever seen that before. Maybe Neon. Let's check it out. Uh, the problem with neon atmospheres is that they are dark. Um, the whole concept of neon atmosphere is interesting. Um, neon is fairly abundant in the universe. Um, Maybe, maybe later I can show you like a diagram or I can show it to you right now. Let me see. Science right away. Element. Abundance. That's a module there. In the universe. Of course, hydrogen and helium are gonna be by far the most abundant. But curiously, neon is also very abundant in the universe. And that is due to the fact that... Uh, it's due to how elements are created inside stars. Essentially, all elements with... Um, an even atomic number so an even number of protons in the nucleus um, are more abundant than the others and that is due to essentially helium fusion into whatever atom exists and helium has two protons right so so neon happens to be element number 10 C couldn't remember if it was 8 or 10 and it's particularly abundant um, let me show it to you uh, this is a classic figure in cosmochemistry or M many many other fields too so uh, the vertical scale is logarithmic um, so actually the higher you go it's actually powers of 10 more abundant but basically yeah you have hydrogen and helium by far the most abundant carbon nitrogen oxygen and then you can see the neon is the sixth most abundant element in the universe. It's even more abundant than iron. Um, and in fact, is oh, it actually maybe the fifth, even more abundant than hydrogen. The problem of neon is that it's a, it's a noble gas, and it's um. Oh, I didn't realize this was a larger planet. Crap. Uh, let's do. Let's do this. 
There we go. Um, so it's it's an oboe gas, highly volatile, and so it's hard to trap it into an atmosphere. It just usually it's just blown away by solar wind in the early solar system formation. And so it looks like in this game um, it's found on cold planets typically orbiting smaller stars um, because they are cold enough and far away enough that neon is um, is easier to to trap and the problem is that these planets um, are so far away from the parent star that um, they're just very dark. Okay, this is possibly the most forgiving neon I've ever encountered. It's so bright. This is unusually bright. Probably has to do with the fact that it's a high, relatively high gravity. So maybe, but just maybe won't be too hard to find. And in fact, it is right there. Look at that. So easy. Bacterium Taylor scan. Base value one million nine hundred and forty-nine thousand. Minimum sample distance five hundred meters. It's not the new one, but. It's a different one. Still, still new to this region, uncommon, and um, decent value. Ten millions when sold with bonuses. First sample scan. It's pretty good. Nice start. <clears throat> Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Come for hard landing, but quick. I like this music. Second sample scan. No 
geysers. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sampling. I was hoping to find some geysers, but. I was going a little bit too fast for the tier range generation. There they are. These mounds look like uh, cryovolcanoes. I bet they are.
come on. The hitbox. Oh, okay, I see. See if there are any female roles. Probably not, though. Alright. Next. There. Perfect. Say that that's a long one. interesting textures all right nothing particular system. I think this is an F or A unmapped 19 bodies 
this one has potential for like earth like or water words there you go told you there's two two of them Binaries. Body A5. That's one. Meets mapping criteria. And no number two, but this one has moons, I think. Oh, the other one is uh, around the other star. Interesting. Body B2. Meets mapping criteria. Very interesting. Yeah. Or is it? There we go. Body B1 meets mapping criteria. High metal content reformable. A2A. Sulfur dioxide atmospheric landable with life. This that's an interesting one. Body A five A. Sulfur dioxide atmospheric landable with life. Also interesting. In fact, it has exactly the same, almost exactly the same um, bias as the other one, so I'll probably go here. Body A6A. Sulfur dioxide atmospheric landable with life. Body A4. Meets mapping criteria. Body A3. This is a variable system. Meets mapping criteria. It's a very orange planet. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, for sure, need to go this queue. And then. I have five to map. Um, these two, bit far away, but worth it. Um, and then a wait, no, a three, four, five. So start from this one. There's a lot of money. Uh, it's more than 10 millions just with uh, planets here. Because they're almost all terraformable except for the other water ward. I count the other star. It's still valuable, like 1.5 millions plus bonuses. Uh, 
perfect. Going to grab some more water. Sounds. I need to rearrange a few things.
nice perpendicular moon orbit. That's a nice one. Uh, cloudy. How about let's do four on each side. That's a very pretty one. Biology. Bacterium Cerberus and Stratum Araneumus. Not super valuable, but better than nothing. Also, probably new in this region. Big moon. I wonder what is the what is the mass of the water world? It must be fairly large. Oh, not much. Interesting. Okay.
Bacterium sub was scanned. Scan with a crash. Base value 1 million 689,800. Minimum sample distance 500 meters. Maybe I should. Stratum arenina scanned. Lower my landing Base gear. Base value 2 million 448,900. Minimum sample distance 500 meters. Hello, Fiery. How's it going? Look, I'm scanning everything. It's a going. <laughs> I'm doing pretty well. I'm sure. Sure, glad it's it's a Friday. Um, looking forward for the weekend. Also, first sample scan. I've got some work to do. Well, not nothing too bad. Can't complain. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters oh, from previous there it is. Keep riding on top of the stratum. It doesn't seem to be affected by by being run over. This is, I think, one of the coolest stratum too. Kind of looks like a um, I don't know what it looks like actually. Some kind of strange octopus maybe okay let's go this way Be far away now. Minimum distance reached. There you go. Over 500 meters from previous sample. I can see that. Sample Definitely. Complete. And I'm just gonna go with this carb.
first sample scan. Probably go down there. If I can try straight. That's what I don't like about the scarb. Minimum distance reach. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Second sample scan. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sampling. And that's it. Sample complete. All scanned and sampled. And looks like there's gonna be ads coming up in five minutes, something like that. Which is good timing because the trip to the other star is gonna be also a few minutes. So I can probably combine the two. Need to scan this guy and this guy. See what the calculator says. Um, it's a hundred ninety three thousand. It's going to be eight and a half minutes. Time. 
Um, My ship is not here anymore, it's here. Anyway. Um. I guess I can move the carrier. And I wish, like, I wish the the ship didn't stop while I was in the menu. I don't know if there was any work around to that, but anyway, not too big of a deal. B2 are the system, the, the planets to scan. B1 classic high metal content terraformable. B2 water world non terraformable, but still. Nice find. I'm gonna look uh, into EDSM to check if if there is anything of interest here. I don't remember seeing anything though. And then I'll take a break for the ads. I can show you. I'm right here. Uh, pretty much nothing. Ah, oh, there you go. Oh, I, I think I visited the one. Um, <laughs> absolutely nothing. This is a very isolated part of the galaxy. Anyway, ants coming up. I'll take a quick break. I'll see you in oops a few minutes. Thought my mouse was free to move. Yeah, see you in three four minutes.
back again. Still one or two minutes to those planets. In the meantime, I can take care of a few things here. This guy can go there. I'll be back. There's a peach that I've been carrying around for two days which just smells amazing I think it's gonna be sweet but not too sweet These are the ones that also behave really well with the with the pit. Like, look at this. Pit separation has never been so easy. Although it still needs cleaning. Maybe. No, oh, actually, it's fine. Sometimes it's moldy or dirty, but not in this case, it was sealed, which is good. First client here, a metal content. Seem to have a fairly thick atmosphere. WB. I'm I don't know what that means, WB, WB. Well, bounce. Um, should have probably done this instead, but welcome back. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm curious what is the atmospheric pressure on this one. Looks like smoggy, easy. Oh yeah, look at this. Wait, and this is terraformable? 
How is this thermoformable? Like 141 atmospheres at the surface, 744 kelvins, that's like Venus. Wait, it's almost worse than Venus. It's kind of like Venus, but with even more surface pressure. Like Venus, by comparison, is like uh, 80 to almost 100 atmospheres. So this is almost twice that. How can you possibly terraform something like this? Um, and it says CO2. Does it say? No, it... Wait, yes, CO2 atmosphere. That's gonna be a hard one to to terraform. Anyway, not my problem. Oh yeah. That's good. Not as good as I thought though. Um, although this is the... Yeah, this was the less ripened half of the peach. Still pretty good though. Like, um, was dropping a few frames and I got distracted right when it was most important, which means, um, loops. I want to sit in the on the illuminated side though. Nice weather systems. The other one look better though. What's the atmosphere like on this one? Three, ammonia. So I'm puzzled here. How is how's the how's a 99% carbon dioxide with a bunch of sulfur dioxide at 141 atmospheres terraformable? Well, this one is not. Like gravity is nice. Surface temperature is very nice, uh, like almost uh, almost Earth-like. Three atmospheres with some ammonia, a bunch of nitrogen. Nitrogen is good. Oxygen. I don't think this is possible to have ammonia with oxygen. They will probably oxidize each other, but um, still. Yeah, in fact, I think this is probably impossible. I think the nitrogen in ammonia would... Well, when, when the ammonia oxidizes, it will form water and nitrogen. So this should be an ammonia-nitrogen-water atmosphere. 
Anyway. Anyway. Um. Little bit, little bit puzzling, but again, not. I'm not in the terraforming business. I'm just in the exploration one. these two stars I've seen earth likes in a neutron system oh yeah no sure how that works either that's a very good question um, I don't know but I've seen those two and ah, almost look look Look, this is the edge of Earth-like. So close. So close to an Earth-like year, too. Um, yeah, honestly, don't know. Um, as far as I know, neutron stars are bad stars to orbit. They were probably even worse when when the, 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 the star that went supernova before <laughs> was like a super giant or a giant um, so like first so first you have a big star that radiates so much especially in the ultraviolet and probably strips your planet off the atmosphere and then it goes super giant which which is even worse um, and then it goes supernova which basically destroys your planet and then what remains is a wait what, why did I do that no no come on come on wrong buttons excuse me there we go um, and then a neutron stars which are known to emit a bunch of weird radiation um, like they have jets they have um... actually I don't really know what what they do but usually they are not that well behaved all right nothing to scan here so next one Stars are both wonderful and deadly at the same time. Oh, yeah. But now, now you got me curious. Um, I'm gonna check it out. Scroll or Google. This is the real deal. Whoa. Maybe not. There's people's names here. Um, like. Don't really want to give away too much. Um. About 
colleagues and stuff. Uh, there we go. <laughs> let's let's show other searches <laughs> in Google Scholar. All right. Um, as you can see, I've been looking at the moon stuff as well. Anyway, anyway. Um, new neutron star radiation oh, wait 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 sorry i missed a few messages here hello fsd how's it going i'm glad I just created your auto shut out, so I uh, just need to check everything is is good. But this is interesting. Thermal radiation, high energy. like in the 80s we're really into these pulses neutrinos I think it's raining now yeah uh, not mergers I'm not interesting there we go this is exactly what I wanted to see. Atmospheres and radiating surfaces of neutron stars. 2014, so nine years ago. And it's paywalled. Excellent. Uh... No, thank you. Um, this is a website. Uh... Nope. Come on, I just want the plot of the emitted radiation. Magnetic field. Oh, come on. No. No, okay. Thought this was also paywalled. Uh, no. 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 There we go. Uh, oh. Um. Wait. There it is. Um. Can I high resolution image? There we go. This is well. Should read the caption. Like curve models of uh, flares. So, neutron stars have flares. Um, oh, you're, you're welcome, FSD. More than welcome. Um, so, this is the... These are observations. Radio emission, optical emission, and X-ray flux. And as you can see... The X-ray flux is about 10 times lower 
than the optical flux times 10 to the 3 is that times to the t what? Mm. what? why do they use different multipliers? anyway as I remembered neutron star emit a shit ton to use a colloquial term of x-rays so you don't want to be near anywhere near a neutron star <laughs> they, they are just bad boys really <laughs> very bad stars Like, try to imagine having, you know, like, you know, imagine the sun, all the light that you get, one-tenth of that, 10% is x-rays. Like, it, it basically cooks you alive. It, like, ionizes everything. Um, basically, you... Um, you end up fluorescing in the x-rays body a5 uh -huh. ammonia atmospheric landable with life has high biological damn value. this system is good body a4 this system is carbon very dioxide good. rich atmospheric landable with life that's two tectonicas already. Here we go. This is easy, A4, A5. Um, nothing else to scan. And let me reset the chat scroll here because it was lagging behind on my side. As, so how's, how's your day, FSD? Hope everything is good. Oh wait, so you're also... Are you also in... In Australia? I don't know what is the time zone for Australia or neighboring countries. Um, um, my day was good. Um, oh. oh yeah, of course, yeah of course, it's 8am, I don't know why I thought about Australia, because it's 9 in Italy right now, I know that, I, I should have guessed actually that you were UK somewhere um, right you're right fiery I, I didn't even look honestly body a4 
has high biological value. Um, for some reason, I was thinking that it was still night in Europe and um, morning in in Australia and nearby countries. I guess that testifies for my day. It has been a somewhat long day. But a good day nevertheless. Um, so here there's only one thing to map. And that is a Stratum Tectonicus. Yes, it is. I'm. I'm in uh, Pacific time, so yeah, it's just past midnight right now. So technically speaking, Saturday morning at this point. saying earlier really looking forward to the weekend uh, even though I have some work to do but it's relatively light could be much worse in fact if um, uh, if I don't go to sleep too late tonight I may stream again tomorrow morning in like 9-10 hours something like that The gravity to get Is beautiful. Almost has this dollar green million ten thousand eight hundred minimum sample distance five hundred meters. First sample scanned. I guess also. Euro green. 200 euros is green, right? I'm trying to remember what is the color of euros. I know 50 is orange. I, well, I remember the 50 is orange, 500 is purple. 20 is blue, 10 is pink, 5 is grayish. Wait, oh, okay. Thought it was farther away. Pretty sure 200 euros is green. Meters 
second sample scanned. Right. No, wait. This could be um, an outcrop. Is this an outcrop? Yep. Traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Okay, it's in the wrong one. First, 95 million are in. I don't really need the money actually, like, in fact I have too much, don't really know what to do with it, but it's always nice to find all these tectonicas, just never know, maybe one day the, the Empire is gonna have the fancy version of a Philip Carrier, maybe, you know, costing like, um, 50 billions instead of just five and I want to be ready for the day like ultra luxury um, fleet carrier is the binary companion like I wouldn't mind having a, a spa on my fleet carrier that they can interact with Then I can do virtual hot tub streams on, on my carrier. Right? Right? I mean, it doesn't have to be Empire, but since M Imperial ships are fancy, usually, that's where my thinking is going, right? You know, with a spa. Maybe a little... I don't know. I have to think about it. But... Um, I don't know, like... Um, an entire... Like, uh, y you know, one, one of those mega cruises that have all the amenities, they have a casino... They have this spa, the casino, they have the swimming pools, the aquatic center, they have uh, the cinema. I want all of that stuff. 
on my free carrier. And too fast, too fast, too fast, too fast, too fast, too fast. <laughs> Whoops. Uh huh. I see, I see we are. You're thinking on the same wavelengths here. You know, and I don't care if it costs me, like, I don't know, 200 million a week to maintain. That's, that's even better. It's a stimulus to, to keep scanning all these tectonicas. That's an interesting view. <laughs> Platy surface. Reminds me of lava flows. Alcyonium. Bacterium Alcyonium scan. Not a new variant. Face value 1,658,500. Minimum go. sample distance 500 meters. Can you land, please? Let's try again. There we go. Ah, what's the gravity? It's okay. Not great, not terrible. In fact, you know what? Two hands up. Alright, 
start with the the good stuff. First sample scan. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Second sample scan. This, this song has um, Super Mario sounds in it. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. <laughs> and very conveniently, there's a Ethereum right here. Sample complete. This is the closest one. First sample scan. You know what this pattern reminds me of besides um, fingerprints? It's almost like vermiculations. Well, no, it's a different thing. Vermiculation. Caves, though. Um, there's many different patterns, but this is what I'm thinking of. It's fairly similar. And the interesting thing is that these are also bacteria. These are clays and bacteria clumping together inside caves. Um, I've seen them myself before uh, when I was still doing spelunking in, in Italy. Like, nearly identical. In fact, you know what? Let's see if I... If I have a picture for you, um, Spleology I think it's gonna be this one. <laughs> oh no, wait, 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 wait. Uh, what?
Man, these pictures are terrible. I saw vermiculations in this cave, but I don't see any pictures. This is a favorite of mine though. This is my foot and I'm descending into the darkness. Um, one of my all-time favorite caving pictures that I've ever taken. Nothing particularly good but... That's kind of another one. The rope going into the darkness. Not a particularly deep cave though. Um, come on, where are the vermiculations? I know I saw them. Many pictures. Uh, nope. The problem is also I. I know another cave where for sure I saw them, but it's not in here for some reason. Oh, there it is. This was a class. So I'm, I'm just gonna show you the whole thing because this this is one of the most beautiful caves in, in Italy. It's in fact a... Um, uh, vermiculations? No, eh, it depends. They are not so rare. Um, but they tend to occur only in some types of caves. Um, usually caves in um, limestone or marble. This one is a cave in limestone. Um, the one I was showing you before, it it's a cave in marble. Like the, the marble that they make statues or countertops out of. It's uh, near Massacarara in, in Italy, where the nice marble comes from, the nice expensive marble. And it, there's a cave in the marble. Absolutely spectacular. So this is actually a touristic cave, but we got to go into the parts that are beyond the touristic part, because this was part of a class with uh, one of the major um, speleology experts in the world uh, like he the professor was used to be like the president of the international splanking association uh, for like a few years um, major major expert in caves so just a bunch of pretty pictures of caves um, my camera at the time was terrible though <laughs> this this was like over 10 years ago um, and he had this, this compact camera but so half of them are kind of out of focus um, 
this is the class some of us uh, this is me right here much younger um, Let me see if I can find any vermiculations. I know there are plants in this in this cave. Um, there you go. These are a type of vermiculation. As you can see, there's this pattern right here, but there is also this spotted pattern um, here and this other pattern here, so three different types of vermiculation in the same spot um, you know, compared to the game like, this is probably the closest shape but as you can see there's all sorts of shapes there are more um, This is like kind of a hybrid between spotted and like curvilinear. You can see them here. And they are a combination of clay and bacteria. Um, yeah. Excellent example of vermiculation in this cave. This is like textbook example. Um, oh yeah, more. There's entire PhDs that were dedicated to vermiculations, still are. Because um, it could be like a it's an interesting combination of bacteria and clay, so it's a substrate that is that could be uh, ideal for the the development of, for example, of extremophiles and neobacterial variants, just due to chemistry. Um, don't remember what this is about, but I think it was something related to the vermiculations here. Um, anyway, enough ver vermiculations. Um, let's go back. There. Now you probably understand why why I like this game so much. It's it's a continuous refresher of memories. Minimum distance reach. I thought I saw a bacterium, but no. Floating tectonic us and I just realized there's advertisements, so I'll take a break.
Welcome back, everyone should be back from advertisements. Um, it was kind of an interesting paper um, found completely randomly in this couple of minutes um, of break. Uh, they say they see vermiculations or in some type of caves or um, not so studied and, and the kind of very classic conclusion like eh, we need to do more research that is kind of a constant in all kinds of research papers Now, if I could find some microbes here... Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, too far. There's my space vermiculations. Of the green alcyonium type. Now you know what caves would be a phenomenal addition to this game, but probably complicated to you. Sample complete. A caves. Five hours. That's a good one. Thank you for the lurk, Pyre. Always appreciate it. Probably do a few more jumps and then gonna call it a night. I'm not super tired, but I should sleep nevertheless. Explore system. system scan. No. Just one star. Frame shift drive 
Next. Another um, reason for standing vermiculations. Um, I was thinking of extrema files earlier, um, but for exobiology, um, in general, there is like caves are kind of at the center of uh, some uh, exobiology, like astrobiology studies because they are kind of unique environments, protected from radiation, um, temperature tends to be very very regular, very constant, um, and but in particular, again, that combination of bacteria and clays is, you know, creates a very particular chemical environment uh, that some scientists think could be fairly common in other planetary bodies because as long as there is some water usually you have clays because um, clays are are types of minerals that usually not always but usually derive from aqueous alteration of other minerals and um, um, they, in some cases they can be very conductive to life and so um, some geologists, some biologists like to study them in caves like they look at the genetic diversity and what kind of elements they, they use, like they depend on because caves on the other hand usually are very poor in resources like there is very little energy available uh, unless there is like um, something like sulfur rich springs or other types of aquifers that have elements that can be oxidized. In the case, there's entire chemobacterial, chemobacterial communities that kind of survive onto the oxidation of sulfur. Um, 41. Argon atmospheric landable with life. Nothing special. I'll skip this one. And that was actually the case of um, the cave I showed you. The cave I showed you was is a cave that in part formed due to the oxidation of sulfur into sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid uh, corrodes the limestone forming calcium sulfate, which is gypsum essentially. Um, but there is an entire microbiological community that kind of survives on that sulfur cycle. And the vermiculations uh, are probably part of that community. Hence why there are so many in the cave. it already eight 
type, B type. Oh, this is this has to be a B type. Yep. Oh. B type, so B and O types are kind of, you know, common destinations for some explorers who then just go for for the interesting bodies and left out, leave out everything else. To each their own, but I honestly think. Um, it's a little bit lazy Meets mapping criteria. to do this. And it doesn't really take much to scan everything else. Come on. Was it like 30 seconds to scan, what, like 10 bodies? 16, whatever, but... Body 11. Meets mapping criteria. And there you go. There's, there's valuables too. Body nine. Meets mapping criteria. Another one. Body ten. And another one. Meets mapping criteria. See? Why why would you miss on all this goodness? What is it, like s five, six bodies to map? Five total, including the water world. All terraformable, each one 2.6, 2.7 millions. They're all in a row, like 9 to 13. Oh well. More money for me. And I saw there was one with volcanism. What's the gravity? Perfect. Hot though. But I think I'll land here once I scan everything else. You know, just to finish on a. Um, Volcanic note. binary system both need to be mapped a 
Exactly. Exactly. All of these are thermoformable, like all five of them. I should have got closer though. This is a very bright one. Almost Venusian bright. It's like this grey, creamy color. Wouldn't be surprised if the atmosphere is somewhat Venusian as well. It is. Oh yeah. Very Venusian. Wait. Uh, yes. I needed to go here. It, yeah. Yeah. That's that's what I'm saying. I mean, in in the, in this case, the water world was terraformable, so it was probably like three, four millions total. But I mean, all of these are two point six, two point seven um, millions, so very good value and there's there's four of them plus the water ward ah, and I was going too fast but another Venusian looks like need to have a loop at some point I'll set up some kind of a deck to to do these loops and things Just out of curiosity. Yep. Kind of siblings. Almost the same atmospheric pressure. Basically the same surface temperature. And how's how's this a thermoformable though? Oh water. A water atmosphere, but Look at this. Um, I'm, I'm now kind of curious about the the lore behind terraforming in this in this universe. Let's see. These two are basically Venuses. I mean, this one is not very different. I don't know why this is not reformable, though. Um, this one is the super hot, high pressure water atmosphere. This is, no, this is much milder. And then there's the water ward with a ni largely nitrogen oxygen atmosphere that's a nice one um, this is also fairly tame but cold and this is also cold whoops yeah uh, where is it Another one. That's three to nine, I think.
I thought it would take longer to get to this. But I guess I was um, far out in the system that the ship was going fast uh, early on. <clears throat> side wait um, should I actually go yeah opposite side of the system this is this is gonna take probably a minute at least. Uh, maybe not, but some time for sure. Um, mild atmosphere, but eh, no, SO2, bad. Uh, this is no atmosphere. This is SO2 super hot surface mixed CO2 SO2 with um, bad atmosphere also mixed let's check CO2, basically a very hot Venus, with an interesting companion, very different. Um, this is a bit more massive than Earth, this is almost all. Uh, much thinner atmosphere, milder temperatures too, which is normal. And yeah, and then the other uh, high metal contents. Cool system overall, though. B star, classic. Um, um, lot of material to form the star often means that there's enough material to build a large system. Not always the case, it depends on the I guess the metallicity of the uh, original nebula, but still. And um, just for reference, metallicity is a measure in astronomy. I'm not an astronomer, but a kind of a fun fact. In astronomy and astrophysics, anything except hydrogen and helium is considered a metal, even if it is not a metal. Um, so metallicity is a measure of what is essentially the fraction, the percentage of um, elements that are not hydrogen and helium. And generally speaking, the higher the metallicity of a star and the The more evolved was the original nebula, which means that there has been probably a few 
a few stars beforehand uh, because t to create heavy you know heavier elements like elements heavier than hydrogen and helium you need to have had a star that burned those elements and created the heavier elements um, so it's basically a measure of the maturity of a particular region in space and of course it's much more complicated than than this but um, this is more or less what I know about metallicity of stars and nebula or nebu nebulae nebulae The, the reference for metallicity is the sun, I think. Pretty sure it's the sun. So, sun has metallicity 1. friend maybe I should have used five probes in the meantime come on in case you're curious this is what I was talking about Okay. Let's go here so so we can call it a night. Do some volcanism scanning.
Almost there. I guess I should have. Scan this first. Pretty much everywhere. No, um, haven't haven't been to the core yet, but. That is, that is gonna be the general direction uh, once I get out of this region. My idea is to slowly spiral in, so go counterclockwise in the galaxy and then kind of zigzag through the arms and eventually go to the core. Uh, the closest I've been to the core was in Colonia, pretty much. Um, I'm actually excited to go, you know, down there because I've seen so many other streams, like um, exploring there, and basically even the night side is like illuminated as if it was day because there are so many stars everywhere. And I mean, everything is so dense there that it's it's basically all new stuff, completely unexplored. So, so yeah, I really want to go there. It's gonna be probably a few months though, maybe by the end of the year. I'll, I'll get there. Okay. So that was like a vent. Oh, yeah. I think I sampled this already... no? Oh, wait, 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 wait. So this is a silicate vent. That's a lava spout. This is the fumarole.
I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is the same stuff. So two gas vent. So is this also an SO2 fumarole? It is. So I'm curious now. Are there silicate va vapor? Uh, fumaroles. Fumarol. There are. This is what I just scanned. There's this other two though. Silicate. So two. This looks different, like larger. No, I saw two. So two I'll try two more, these two, just to make sure I'm not missing anything. More SO2, and another SO2, alright. I'll see if I can land here. It seems to be a good spot with a view. Perfect. that as a resting location for the rest of the 